Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Lunchauskas. Today's the 5th of December 2019. So, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's morning session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then quickly before we jump into the charts, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel here to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page which we update on a daily basis. So I believe you can find a lot of useful stuff here for yourself. So feel free to visit us. Um, but right now, guys, okay, so let's jump into the charts. Now, the first one I want to touch on here is the FTSE 100. Now, I talked about this one yesterday, um, and basically what I was saying that uh, it, we need to keep an eye on some of these key levels. So, comparing it to um, to, um, to trading activity that we saw here on the 2nd of, of December, so basically on Monday, uh, or and then and then on on, on Tuesday, um, yesterday's trading was a little bit uh, quiet, I would say, and uh, we were kind of we, we saw the main price action staying roughly between these uh, two levels that we're keeping a close eye on the 7,140 on the downside and the 7,000. Uh, well, we can round it up towards the 200 probably. And and uh, looking at the cash index right now, because the market is still not open, uh, we can see that the price is already closer to the this little territory right here near the 7,197 area. So what I was saying yesterday that, of course, all this kind of activity is still looking quite uh, bearish. The only thing is for us to get excited with further declines, a drop below the 7,140 level, and ideally maybe uh, a four-hour candle, or not ideal, but I would like to see maybe a four-hour candle close below this before considering further declines. So for now, we're, we're going to remain careful with the downside, given that we already had a, sh a sharp sell-off. The only thing is, of course, we know that sometimes that doesn't stop the indices and if they're they're moving one way they're moving one way yes so for now how you could play this one out is of course keep your eyes on the 7140 if we do get a nice break initially and then maybe a close of a four hour candle then yes we could potentially consider these lower areas here uh not far from the psychological 7000 zone and uh, we could target the 7,045 mark or the 7,020 zone. So we'll keep an eye on those. But for now, <clears throat> uh, again, we if the um, the index pushes above the 7,200 area, yes, we could target some higher levels. Maybe we could even target these EMAs here on the on the four-hour chart. Um, and if they if the let's say for example the buyers fail to push uh, the price above it, then we could see a nice a nice curve here and a move back back down but if this for some reason starts pushing higher above the 7340 uh, uh, 45 area right here then uh, this is where it could become a little bit interesting more interesting for the more buyers and we it, it increases the chances of a a possible test of the uh, 7441 mark here as you can see it, it acted as a fantastic area of resistance lately so something that we're going to be keeping a close eye on and who knows maybe uh another uh, another test could lead to a break and a push higher but again we would need to see this one uh climbing back above the 7340 44 40 44 45 mark somewhere around here guys um Jumping into something that's going to be very quite relevant this today and uh, tomorrow, and that's of course the uh, oil 
um so wti oil looking at this picture and i talked about this one yesterday and uh basically uh, what i was saying that in order for us to uh consider uh the upside here we would need to see a push a nice good strong push back inside this rising channel and back above this 57.20 mark so we did get both of those we saw the uh, commodity accelerating here to the upside um with the downside i, I was saying that to, uh, yes even though we did have that uh, nice sharp sell-off in order for us to get comfortable with the downside we needed to see a drop below this 54.83 mark and as you can see now um the well the commodity didn't quite reach that area and that's why the downside never kind of uh, got triggered uh, the, tr the downside idea never got triggered um, for now of course uh, looking at this all this picture uh, to be honest the rising channel is well it got violated and to be honest we can probably get rid of it because now the main focus is going to fall on some key areas of support and resistance and as you probably can see now by the chart one of the main ones is going to be this one right here and that's roughly around the 58.70 zone um, so in order to get comfortable with higher levels we need to see a push uh, a break above this level here and only then we'll aim for higher levels because you can see how well this play out and this was basically near the highest point of November um, so you can see how well this level holds or should I say keeps holding uh, the the price from moving higher so if if we do get a break above this then well this is where it could become a little bit more interesting for the buyers um, it, we could then target the 59.23 mark but uh, slightly above that we do have this other potential area of resistance near the 59.50 um, zone roughly around there and of course if that doesn't stop then uh, then yes we could uh, consider further moves higher initially maybe a little, a little aim for this little intraday swing uh, low here near the 61.40 and then we'll take it from there um, for now all eyes are on this barrier here uh, let's see how this is going to play out be very careful of course because we may see some increased volatility uh, due to the OPEC plus meeting that we're uh, that we're going to be seeing uh, today and tomorrow so keep your eyes on that one guys um, in terms of the downside well I mean it's probably we're gonna wait here now uh, for a drop below the 56.60 area roughly around here and only then and only then um, we could consider these lower areas but only then we will even target the 54.83 mark first um, Jumping into a few pairs now very quickly, AUD and ZD. So um, I've talked about this one previously, and previously what I was saying here that we we are ha we could be having ourselves a nice falling veg pattern. So initially it was kind of working out nicely, but uh, the the sell-offs continued, um, the drift lower yes continued, and uh, looking at this picture right now, um, so I've drawn something else here. Uh, basically we could be seeing ourselves a nice uh, falling channel here. Now uh, this of course uh, became uh, possible because of the sharp sell-off that we had this morning during the early Asian morning and uh, you can see how well this drifted lower and uh, kind of found support uh, let me just put this one on the chart very quickly found support around the 1.04 zone and uh, from there from there the pair rebounded and pushed back to the upside now again uh for now in a way uh as long as it kind of stays in this pattern uh it's difficult to talk about the um the upside um unless we see some breaks here unless we see a break of this upper side of the falling channel if we do then yes we could consider higher levels and uh, uh initially of course we'll aim for this uh in a way could say that uh, a nice beautiful number of 1.05 um, a nice good break above this could lead um, the pair uh, towards slightly higher levels here um, and we're not going to target too much here to the upside but um, some uh, some levels higher could be met here so uh, for now it's still trading inside this in this inside this pattern um, so that's why we're going to be very careful with the upside uh, in a way it could drift a little bit higher test the upper bound of the falling channel and if it fails to break above it this could lead to another sell-off um, USD CAD now uh, something 
quite interesting as well. This is what I talked about yesterday. And basically yesterday I was saying that if we do get a drop below the 1.3251, this is could this could open the path towards uh, one of our targets here near the 1.3886 and or the 1.31 uh, 1.3186 uh, or the 1.3176. Now it did. Per perfectly test both of these levels so perfect um, that's a wonderful uh, area of support now given the sharp sell-off that we had now in a way of course this don't get me wrong it might continue drifting lower uh, but the main scenario that we're kind of looking at right now is something like this of course so a bit of correction and then maybe another leg of selling and if, if the pair struggles to push above its 200 EMA if the pair manages to push above the 200 EMA and breaks above the 1.3250-51 zone, then, well, I mean, this is where uh, it could become a little bit more exciting again for the buyers, and we could start targeting the uh, the highest point of November near the 1.3328 uh, zone. So uh, we'll keep an eye on this one, but again, for now, uh, we... we, we probably are looking for maybe a bit of a bit of correction here but don't get me wrong if you if suddenly this starts drifting lower and starts breaking the 1.3176 mark 75 zone then well i mean be very careful here with the with the correction higher it may drift lower first find some support somewhere around underneath here and then drift lower so one of the key support levels that we're going to be keeping an eye on the below here is going to be the 1.3107 uh slightly above that we do have another potential area of of support near the 1.31 uh 1.3150 three zone roughly around here marked by the low of the 7th of november and then we'll take it from there guys then we'll see what he wants to do but for now this is our main scenario um let's see if this is going to work out gbp jpy now uh, of course the pound got a boost yesterday we pushed higher um we managed to clearly move above the 141.51 uh, level i talked about this one previously and most likely now uh the some of the levels need to be adjusted now uh looking at this picture here you can see that overall yes we are climbing higher trading above this upside support line taken from the low of the, th of the 2nd of september um the pair managed to overcome this uh, this barrier here near the 142.27 the next level of resistance that we're keeping close eye on is going to be the 143.75 that's basically the low of the 25th of april um very good area of support previously now it could be taken as a as a resistance so let's see if this is going to play out for now yes this is going to be our target um but don't get me wrong given the uh, that we are quite um let's say overstretched here to the upside um then yes we could uh we could see this one drifting further north so for now uh guys for now basically yes keep an eye on this level here the 143.75 let's see if the uh, the pair if the pair manages to reach that today uh for now everything's kind of leaning more towards the upside um and like i said yeah for now uh all eyes are on this in case this suddenly reverses back down uh keep your eyes on the uh this little territory right here now near the 141.85 zone roughly around here if it drifts lower but stays above this of the above this barrier here then we could see an, uh this one curving curving back up here and uh, then drifting towards this 143.75 uh, mark for now but for now of course uh the the scenario main scenario is more to the upside let's see if this can uh test this this area right here if it starts dropping below the 140.87 mark roughly around here this is where we could consider lower areas guys so and uh for now for now guys uh the downside could be limited as well due to this uh key area of support here near the 139 level so uh something to keep an eye on um, but of course if that gets broken then uh further declines are possible and then we could start targeting this upside support line that i previously mentioned but for now um for now let's see how the how far can this go higher um gbp usd also good good uh movement here yesterday this is what i talked about uh yesterday as well and basically i was hoping to see a bit maybe more correction um and uh because of the like uh, the, the activity 
activity on the euro dot like like on the euro dollar dollar but the but the main driver here was the pound so the pound was the strongest one and uh, we saw this uh, basically continuation higher our next target uh, I've spoke about this target the 1.3186 86 now that's basically the highest point of May um, so we'll keep a close eye on that one um, for now this is where the pair is seems to be heading to and uh, let's see if, if it can continue in that direction but again that this is our target the 1.3186 in case it decides not to travel all the way to the 1.3186 first it decides to correct back down we'll keep a close eye on today's pivot roughly around the 1.3070 mark if it holds then we could see another uh, round of buying and maybe then we could reach this 1.31 186 level. Uh, in terms of the downside, pretty straightforward. We need to see a drop back below the 1.30. Uh, 1.3013 level and of course below this upside sh little short-term upside support line and only then we will uh, consider uh, slightly lower areas so that's why guys for now uh, be very careful and keep your eyes on these uh, euro usd now this is the probably the most interesting one and uh, this is what i talked about yesterday and basically what i was saying that we had a fantastic break here to the upside that was wonderful uh, but uh, we even had a four hour candle close above this but what i was saying that if we see a bit of a correction and uh, if the rate fails to move below back below the 1.1093 this could lead to a nice potential uh, another round uh, of buying but if we get a break below this 1.1093 now this is where it could become a little bit tricky for the buyers but again this little territory for us will be somewhat of a neutral one if we start start seeing the pair drifting back below the 1.1065 zone then yes we could consider possible a uh, possible move lower here uh towards these all of these emas here uh but in order to get a little bit or should i say slightly more comfortable with lower areas uh in the short run uh a drop below the 1.1043 level would be needed so of course for now the fact that the um the pair drifted back down and kind of closed and uh, let me just actually show you the daily charts here on this one so that's going to be more clear you can see how uh it failed uh, it it made this false breakout here um and but failed to close above the 1.1093 level so of course all this doesn't really paint a very good uh, positive picture but on, unless let's say this suddenly starts pushing uh back back above the 1.1093 three level then we will consider uh, slightly higher levels the only thing is that of course the yesterday's move created another important barrier around here uh, near this uh, 1.1116 uh, zone and uh, if we get a break above this then yes uh, we could consider uh, further moves higher because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yes uh, these higher levels could be met but for now uh, given that it drifted back below the 1.1093 level and closed the daily candle below this here right now in this territory we're going to remain neutral um, because for us to consider maybe slightly lower areas initially we would like to see a drop below the 1.1065 zone uh, but then to get a little bit more comfortable with lower areas a drop below the 1.1043 could do the trick here for more uh, for more sellers so let's keep an eye on this one guys okay guys I really hope you found it useful thank you very much for sticking around and watching it till the end uh, just a quick reminder there won't be any uh, traders espresso tomorrow Tomorrow, uh, there will be a Trader's Tea Time today, but again, neither of the uh, Espresso or Tea Time uh, videos tomorrow. I will, uh, will resume on Monday, but again, like I said, join me later on today at my Trader's Tea Time, 14.15 um, GMT. As always, we'll have a look at some of these instruments and some new ones, and then we'll see how the market plays out. Keep your eyes on the economic calendar here, guys, today. Uh, maybe not, not the most major events happening, but uh, keep an eye on also on the headlines, especially coming out from, coming out from the OPEC Plus meeting. Thank you very much, guys, and bye-bye.